move to the rhythms of Africa. The Africa Cup of Nations from January the 13th to February the 11th on France 24. Me gusta Francia 24 horas porque nos enteramos de las noticias de Europa, de América Latina y de todos lados. Nos gusta mucho la cultura francesa. The world is ever changing. The news doesn't wait. That's why at France 24, we'll always be there to help make sense of world events. For the best international coverage, 24 hours a day, no matter what, France 24 is with you everywhere, all the time. Liberté, égalité, actualité. Hello once again to all you football lovers. It's that time again, the France 24 Africa Cup of Nations show. I'm Jean-Emile Jamin and joining me for the latest roundup is a Eurosports journalist, Ruben Slachter. Ruben, thanks again for joining us. Well, the last 16 is over and we have our final two results of this year's Africa Cup of Nations uh, last day. To the day all started with Mali just edging out Burkina Faso in a tight 2-1 encounter and that was followed by South Africa, a shocking uh, the football world with a result 2-0 against Morocco rising above expectations. It was uh, Evidence Mahopa who got Bafana Bafana off the mark with a brilliant slotted goal under Yassin Bounou. And while the Atlas Lions huffed and puffed, Walid Regagi's men couldn't find the back of the net. South Africa added a second through a stunning Tabojo Mokwena free kick, winning the match 2-0. Uh, I'm going to start just straight away with you, Ruben. What a result for South Africa. Let's have another shock, right? I mean, it's, <laughs> it's incredible. It's incredible. We, we're just saying we're now having eight different quarterfinalists compared to two years ago. That's, uh, that's just incredible. And, and a really uh, well played by, by, by South Africa. It was a comp super boring game until the goal <laughs> of, of South Africa. And that's also credits to them because they, they, they let them fall into the trap, in my opinion. I think that Morocco were a bit like, okay, they took it slow because South Africa was just, they didn't want to take any risks. Then came, South Africa knew that there was one moment and luckily for them, it was straight to goal, and then it was complete mayhem on the pitch all over the place. It, it was just uh, such a surreal encounter, so tight, and exactly what Hugo Bruce would have wanted, isn't it? Yeah, and then and then the last 30 minutes, it was just Morocco getting uh, getting forward and even having that golden opportunity with the penalty missed by by a star player uh, Ashraf Hakimi. So, yeah, it's it's also I mean I, I I wouldn't say lucky because I think that South Africa deserved to win. It's also that Morocco. Uh, like Senegal yesterday, maybe they took it a bit too lightly, the game, and once they were behind, they couldn't turn it around. Well, one man who's been following uh, Morocco very in-depth is our very own James Vecina. He's been standing by in Abidjan, and we're going to get his thoughts now. Uh, James, uh, welcome, and uh, I just want to just find out, it's Ashraf Hakimi taking that uh, final penalty. You would bet all your money that he would score at the PSG man, and yet... He misses. It hits the bar. Morocco is out. Where did it go wrong for them? Jean, sure, it's exactly actually what I was just going to say. We were talking with uh, my colleagues watching that game and they were just saying how much uh, Hakimi never misses the target like that. <laughs> Repeating it after and after again. And what happened? Yes, he hits the crossbar. And that is the end of uh, Morocco's hopes, basically, because... As Ruben was just saying uh, just then, is that yes, this was a time of once they were one down, yes, they activated, yes, Morocco started moving. I don't quite agree. I would say, though, that they seemed more shaken up rather than feeling any side, side of laziness or anything like that from, from or apathy uh, 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 brought up against South Africa. To me, they looked shaken up. And they obviously, we knew their squads was having difficulties and they had uh, players missing for them tonight. And that definitely uh, did not play in their favour. But an absolute shock, whether this is the biggest shock of the tournament, I'm pretty confident to say that yes, it is. Yesterday was absolutely incredible to see the home team uh, beat the defending champions. But this, you would never have seen it coming. I know that even from thousands of kilometers from here, I can hear the smile in your voice <laughs> announcing those results. <laughs> but let's be honest, this is the biggest upset that we've heard so far. And thinking that Morocco 
who are one of the favourites and now of whom uh, there are very few left in the tournament, really. Um, well, to think that that was going to happen tonight just seems, uh, just seems before the, before kickoff, did not seem possible. So Morocco, de Morocco definitely shaken up. Uh, uh, I mean, for, for, for the whole team in themselves, I don't know how they're going to digest this one, but um, I know that you're going to digest that one and sleep very, very nicely on uh, on, on your pillow tonight. <laughs> <laughs> James, I think you hit the nail on the head there. I mean, I, I, I have to say, I, I'm going to sleep very, very well indeed. I mean, uh, that's the beauty of football and the beauty of AFCON because, of course, Ruben, South Africa, they, they came in, Hugo Brewer said that they have the capacity to beat this Morocco side. And yet everything played out to exact perfection, just like he said, the midfield, the attack, the defense, so structured. Yeah, it's, and it's all also about belief. That's a, a big lesson from this whole tournament, if I may say so. Uh, James, James is right. Huh? There were two very important players missing today for Morocco with, with uh, Bufal and, and Ziyech, and they were lacking creativity. There's also the whole story about Morocco. They're a whole different stature during this tournament, of course. They, are the, they were the favorites to win it. It's a complete different uh, mindset starting into a game. And I think that Hugo Bros really played well on it and preparing his team to, okay, let us be the underdogs. Our moment will come. And they just played a clever game. And we have to say that, especially in defense, and the central defenders were both outstanding because to play against such a good header like Al, Al Nassiri and not conceding any big uh, headed chances, it's just a, a, a huge compliment for how they defend it. And yeah, and, and also just uh, seizing your chances when, when you have to. Yeah, it was for them, I think, the perfect game. And, and, and James, exactly on that point, I mean, most of those players are from uh, Mamelodi Sundowns, the South African team. Uh, could you see the uh, galvanized unit uh, that, uh, that basically playing together uh, enables a team to, to perform on the pitch uh, so much better? I mean, uh, despite, uh, you only had uh, Evidence Makopa, the attacker from Orlando Pirates, and uh, Percy Tal from uh, Lackley, but uh, most of those players were sundowns. Uh, how important was that? Well, well, it is exactly that. And again, I send it back to you, Ruben, again, you hit the nail on the head um, with that in saying that it is the belief, which is what we've seen throughout the tournament, that that is what brings these wins. That's what we saw tonight, because as mentioned, like we wouldn't have imagined this to that extent, getting there. Yes, OK, there was the first goal going through. And yes, some difficult uh, decisions taken uh, towards Morocco uh, on the field, of course. Uh, but in the end, I mean, look at the last goal. Look at that last free kick going in. I think it sums up everything. You've got to have the mindset to be able to bring that in at that point in the stage, knowing that you're going to kill the game at that point and that you have actually uh, the ability to do so. Coming up against a team who is much, much in, in, in terms of players, in terms of just on paper, is much stronger, that speaks much more to the rest of the world because a lot of the people, a lot of people watching will be discovering the names of many of the players uh, that they saw tonight uh, watching South Africa. And yeah, it is that, it is about showing that you are able to come up to against one of these bigger teams and perform just just not the 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 ego that uh, that not having any fears about that and not trembling in front of goal uh, as we were mentioning there and so that you do take those opportunities and that's what we've seen so far every time this tournament is if you miss out on the opportunities you do get punished after that and well if you take them then you're one ahead you're two ahead and you win the game it's as simple as that Absolutely, James. I mean, the clinical uh, importance of getting those goals, but certainly the likes of uh, Teboko Mokwe, Naobri Modiba and uh, Kalisa Mudawa are, are going to be names which most uh, big clubs are now going to be scouting. Well, of course, that came after the earlier game where Mali stamped their authority on the competition. They beat Burkina Faso 2-1. The Eagles opening the scoring when uh, Bayern Leverkusen defender Edmond Tapsoba scored a ridiculous uh, own goal. Mali made it to two when Lassine Sinayoko slotted through the goalkeeper's legs. A Bertrand Traore penalty wasn't enough, though, and the Stallions are uh, crashing out. Uh, Ruben, Mali, they weren't that impressive in their last two games, but finally they got over the line and they're showing their uh, dark horse uh, capacity uh, to go through all the way. Very good first half. Very good first half from Mali. We were talking about it yesterday that they're quite comparable teams, but they showed in the first half that they have more quality than Burkina Faso. Then there was that second goal just after, after, uh, just after three minutes in the second half, I think, and 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 the penalty, and then it became a bit scrappy until the end. But I think if they can continue on the way how they played that first half, it will give them a lot of confidence for the rest of the tournament. I think that this team. They are quite confident, you can see that. And again, the word believe, we can say it also for the, for the team of Mali. 
they will now think that they have really uh, have a huge chance to to win it and to go go all the way. What's what's going to stop them from going all the way? Well, first Ivory Coast <laughs> because that's <laughs> their next opponents. I also think still what what we also said yesterday, the lack of 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 goals. I think that's the biggest problem for them. And that's also why the game against Ivory Coast will be an interesting one. Because the teams are quite comparable. Very strong midfield. In defense, pretty good. In the attack, it's lacking a bit of creativity. It's lacking, it's lacking goals. So mm -hmm. it will be just on the day. It will also, we will also have to see how uh, the Ivory Coast will react to that sensational win against Senegal. Will it galvanize them and put them even further? But from a Mali point of view, I think that this is a huge, huge opportunity to go really far and, and maybe even win it. Uh, it would be it's just such a great story. Of course, they were finalists back in 1972, losing 3-2 to the DRC. Uh, but they are struggling a little bit in front of goal. They've scored four times this competition. Let's see how they can uh, go in the next round against Ivory Coast. Well, speaking of that, there we have it. The last 16 of this year's edition of AFCON has officially come to an end. Some shocks, some thrills, some dominations, some last-minute winners. It all all started with that 3-0 uh, win for Angola over Namibia and then uh, Nigeria they beat Cameroon 2-0 Equatorial Guinea uh, didn't manage to beat uh, their uh, Derby neighbors Guinea Egypt suffered a penalty shootout loss to the DRC Cape Verde overcame Mauritania with a last minute Ryan Mendes penalty Senegal out on penalties as well to Ivory Coast, a resurgent Ivory Coast, Mali beating 2-1, uh, Burkina Faso 2-1, and South Africa stunning Morocco. And uh, that uh, is how that went. I mean, what other results just stand out for you quickly there, Ruben? Yeah, well, of course, Ivory Coast, uh, South Africa today. And, and okay, also Egypt going out. Although, if you look uh, purely at this tournament, I think that there's not a, such a difference between the two teams, between uh, the, the DRC and, and Egypt. But yeah, e Egypt as, as the record winners of, 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 F, of FCON, of course, you have to mention them. But yeah, it's just the tournament of all, of all, uh, of all surprises. To be fair, I think that the, 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 the group stage brought us better football, more exciting football. But you know, with the knockout stages, there's more tension. I understand that. The, the surprises are still there. And now there are eight teams that all think uh, that they can win it. And that's beautiful. The two big favorites are out. It's open. I think that all eight are really have a chance to win it. So bring on those quarterfinals. Completely. Uh, and, and I just want to bring James back in to talk about that. Because James, uh, you were at the stadium last uh, on, on, uh, on Monday when... Senegal got knocked out at the hands of the Ivory Coast. A huge shock. And now with Morocco going out, all of a sudden, the hosts have a real good chance. Uh, I mean, what is the sense going to be well, like? They do. They, they do, they do. And they're not going to have to forget and just remain concentrated, obviously, the whole way because it has opened up the board for them. And tonight has shown, obviously, it gets rid of Morocco. And that is obviously a massive, massive opportunity for them to go and perhaps lift uh, the trophy on their side. And as Ruben says there, it is. Uh, these are all, all these teams here do believe that they can really make it. And that is key to what we've been seeing on the field. Yes, indeed. Uh, it hasn't been quite the same games on for some of them uh, in the round of six. And obviously they are going to be more careful, but there are some teams who have been playing to their full potential. And among those, I do want to uh, recall Angola in that uh, round of 16 clash against Namibia because that was fantastic. Uh, we've talked about it before, but the way that they have managed to fight against the tide that was going against them in their way and managing to just keep that attack the whole way was absolutely incredible. We actually went to see uh, some of the team uh, training this afternoon and they're determined uh, still that they can uh, go further. Obviously, they're coming up against one of the massive favorites Nigeria uh, their next game and Nigeria has been absolutely really really impressive we watched them in the stadium uh, just behind me just a few bit earlier in the week and they have everything <coughs> they have everything in it they have the defense they just it not maybe not the quite the same uh, interest in terms of attack uh, for uh, as, as Angola is in the sense of sending everyone forward uh, but of course uh, they do have a man by the name of Victor Ossiman who's been very very interesting to watch on there and is deadly uh, with the ball and helping his team just in general but Angola for example that is one of the fixtures that I'm very much looking forward to uh, because after what we've seen tonight, I can't rule out that there's going to be, that, that there could, could be a massive surprise from a small team. I'm not going to rule it out. I know that right now it could sound, uh, it could sound just implausible, but 
it's a huge opportunity. Uh, of course, James, that brings back to the point that this AFCON will have a complete new set of quarterfinalists from the last African Cup of Nations, which is an astonishing statistic, is that not, Ruben? I mean, uh, let's let's look at those uh, quarterfinal fixtures now. We have them. It all starts on Friday as uh, three times winners Nigeria. They face off against Angola there, as James mentioned. Uh, in the late game, then uh, the DRC, they hope to get past a determined Guinea. Then on Saturday, hosts Ivory Coast face another tough task. They come up against the Eagles of Mali. And finally, Bubista's Cape Verde tackle a South Africa after this uh, incredible win against Morocco. Uh, Ruben, uh, James calls Nigeria-Angola a fascinating clash because of the Angolan attack against the Nigerian defender. What other game there stands out for you? Yeah, I'm sorry. I wanted also to say <laughs> Nigeria against Angola, but not for the attack versus defense mode. I think that both teams are pretty impressive in both attacking and defensive until now. And now they will be really tested by a decent attack on the other side. So that will be interesting to follow. Uh, Mali against Ivory Coast, just for what I said before, against those two midfields uh, getting against each other. And how will Ivory Coast react again to such a topsy-turvy event until now? That's interesting. Uh, Gu Guinea against um, against Congo will be a game, I think, of a, of a, a, a once-in-a-lifetime chance for both the teams. And, and then we will have uh, South Africa against Cape Verde. I think two teams who will be sky high in, in, uh, in confidence right now. They both also will think that this is the opportunity to go through. I mean, yeah, we don't have to say too much about against Mark uh, Owen because he will come back in here and is the biggest uh, Cape Verde fan. But Cape Verde against, against, against South Africa can be a fantastic clash as well because both teams also showed some very, very interesting football. Uh, and uh, playing exactly to their strengths. This is a curious point, though. I want to I take it to James now. Uh, Morocco came into this game against South Africa now as favourites. Uh, we saw them in the World Cup they were not favorites at all. And now they've had, they had to try and employ a completely different uh, approach to this as favorites. They got found out. South Africa approached the Morocco game not as favorites. And now they're going to go into Cape Verde as possible favorites. How much will that play into the psychology? There's Obviously it will, obviously it will. But I've got to say um, that it's not just Mark who's supporting uh, Cape Verde from that far. There's a lot of support actually from uh, Cape Verde over here in, in Ivory Coast as well because they've been very impressive um, to see. And so maybe, yes, of course, they are coming into that after a massive win uh, for well, South Africa are, uh, opposite um, against Morocco. Um, but there's a lot of hope uh, for Cape Verde with what they've managed to deliver so far. They've been extremely impressive all throughout. So th there is... A, I, I wouldn't, it's hard to say whether here in themselves who's going to be uh, supporting mostly uh, one for the other. But um, yeah, it's definitely it's, it's going to be obviously fresh with, uh, with South Africa's uh, victory from tonight. There's going to be a lot of hope. But perhaps with Cape Verde coming in as the underdogs, and there is going to be a lot of supporters, a lot of people hoping that they can. Uh, I'm sorry, Jean, but um, perhaps caused another upset. <laughs> oh, no, it, it's, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. We don't mind as long as, uh, <laughs> as, long as every team plays to their potential. Uh, Ruben, I'm just going to put you on the spot. Uh, four semi-finalists. <laughs> okay, uh, that's, that's a difficult one. I think, I think that Nigeria will win, just also to, uh, to push it a bit to, a bit to, to James. I think that, uh, well, I think that the, the, the DRC will win. I think that... Uh, yeah, Mali, Mali against, I, I will say Ivory Coast as the home nation. And then uh, the last game, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll have to say South Africa just to make you happy. No, it's fine. You don't have to make <laughs> me happy, but I do appreciate that. Nonetheless, <laughs> that is uh, all the time that we have for now. There are the fixtures. That is the quarterfinals. Uh, uh, one last time. Uh, great thanks to everyone who joined us uh, this evening. Uh, Ruben Slachter, James Vecina, congratulations to Mali and a congratulations to South Africa. They are through to the quarterfinals of this year's edition of the African Cup of Nations. And now the last eight to come. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon. In South Korea,